So in a previous video, we already looked at how to create a flyer. So you might think, well, why am I showing this again? Well, Microsoft Word gives you a lot of different tools that you can use. So we want to look at those tools to help you make better documents. In this example, we're going to look at using things like styles, smart art, and even applying themes and colors to our document. So this is going to be the basic example of what we're going to create. And now let's go ahead and show you how we're actually going to build this. So I'm going to create a new document, and this time I'm going to use Control N to create a brand new blank document. And I'm going to first type in my header, getting a job. Now, this is really small, so once again, I'm going to come down here and come up to about 100%, make it a little bit easier for me to see. And now I can see getting a job, but this does not have the same pop that my previous example did. So I'm going to come and choose my styles. Now I find that on my home tab and I choose my style section. I'm going to pick title much bigger helps it stand out. It's still not where we want it to be just yet, but that's okay. We're going to get there in just a minute. I'm going to come down to a new line. Now in my example, I showed you, I had some buttons with some arrows kind of pointing to it, kind of showing a nice progression. So let's take a look at how we're going to add that. Well, anytime I want to add something inserts a great place to start. So, I'm going to come over here to my Insert tab, and I'm going to choose Smart Art. Now, when I choose Smart Art, there's a lot of different types of graphics I can pick. And I like to think about them based upon what I'm seeing. So I can choose, for example, like a list, and I have different ways of displaying my list. I have things like a cycle, and it shows me how things move around from one place to the next, often coming back to either where it originated from. Uh, you can see I have hierarchies and relationships and other things. The one I want to pick, though, is going to be in my process. My process is going to show me a path. Do step one, step two, step three. And I'm going to pick my third one down on my far left-hand side. It says continuous block process. I can see it there. Okay. And I'm going to click OK. Once I check out my preview, it's kind of what I want. And you'll see it shows a block of text, text, and text. So how do I fix this? Well, I'm going to come over here first to my little arrow on my far left-hand side. And when I click on it, notice I now have a place to type in my text. So my first thing I'm going to do is type in attend workshop. Create resume. Now, if I hit a tab, Notice it's going to indent it for me. Okay, so I don't want that. Uh, it's a great way if I do want to have like nested bullets and stuff like that. Other smarter is going to use stuff like that. It's not what I need. So I'm going to do shift tab to go back. Apply for job. And then if I need to add a fourth box, all I have to do is hit the enter key. And notice it creates a new box for me get hired. Once I'm done entering my text, I can click on my little X. I can use my sizing handles to resize things as I need. You'll notice here that I have an alignment with where my text is and I can choose to resize that as necessary so it lines up according to my rulers. Now it's done, I'm going to go to a new line. And I need to put in some text. Now, luckily, I've got some warm, it's some text from before. I'm just going to copy this and paste it in. And I'm feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, it's not perfect, and we're going to have to make some changes, but I've got a good start as to what I need to do. All right, so let's see what I can do to kind of really make this pop, though, how I can really be effective. Copy and pasting text in is one thing. This is all laid out nice, but I can do better. I'm going to come over here, my design tab. And my design tab lets me create both themes and colors. Now, a theme is made up of both colors and fonts, as you'll see in just a little bit. But what it is, is a certain combination of those colors and fonts. So I can come over here, and as I hover over it, you'll notice that things change. So I can kind of pick, what do I like? What's kind of where I'm going? 
Sometimes in a corporate environment, you'll have a default corporate theme that can be chosen and is expected to be used. Uh, this will be provided for you. Other times, you get to pick. Now, I wanted something that had uh, maybe all capital letters and had a line on top and a bottom. This seems like to be a really good choice, uh, but I can go and look at others as well. Sometimes we'll have bigger fonts. Sometimes we'll have smaller ones. Sometimes they'll be centered. Once you click on it, it's selected. Now, if I want to see even more, I do have a scroll bar and a pull down bar so I can see even more than what's just there initially. I can come here to my colors and I can make changes. based upon what interests me. So let's say that this really isn't what I wanted for my smart art. So I'm going to click the whole smart art object and I just like to click away from my individual boxes. And I'm going to come up here to my smart art tools and I have two, I have design and I have format. And under design I have my layouts and I can pick different layouts if I want. And I can kind of just click on those and, and see what they look like. Or I can click a little drop down and I can see all of my process ones. So depending upon what I'm looking for, maybe I find that this is better for me or maybe something that's full size. I'm going to pick something that has the little arrows in between. And that takes up a little bit less room, so I'm going to come in here and resize it. Notice it doesn't change the size of my boxes, just the extra space. And that's going to make it so I can fit on one page. I can also come over here and choose my Smart Art styles. So you'll notice as I hover over these, I get slightly different styles. I can create 3D effects, and I can make things look like buttons or have shadows. Once again, a little bit goes a long way with something like this. Now, I can even get really creative, and they have some three-dimensional ones, uh, but sometimes, remember, these aren't going to print out real well, or they kind of distract from what's going on. So even though I have a lot of three-dimensional ones and some really fancy ones, I may not want to pick them. All right, so I'm just going to pick something that's relatively simple. It has a nice little pop. It sticks out, but it's not going to be too distracting. My text, I notice I have some blank space at the bottom. So I'm going to select my text. And I just select my text by putting my mouse cursor up at the top of my text and holding the shift key to select down. When I changed the style, it, it changed the overall font size. I went from an 11 to a 10.5. So I'm just going to come here to my little pop-up menu and right-click and choose, let's do 12. That should be big enough. Oh, you'll notice it went just a little too big, okay? Because now it's on a second page. Uh, I know it's, I got two pages. I can look at my bottom left-hand side and see it's two pages. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select my text again and choose 11.5. Now I'm on one page, it's one full page. But it's just a little bit bigger, and bigger text is usually easier to read. So this is going to be more like a handout than a flyer, but I still want something that's easy for people to read. So if I have text, make it big enough so that people can easily read and see this. And this is a good example of how I can do this process. If I want to look at the whole thing, I can come right here to my View tab, Zoom, click on one page. And when I see the whole page, I can make a decision on if this is where I'm going to stay or if I need to make a couple more changes to it. Once you're done, save this document. 